Well, hello everyone and welcome back to my YouTube channel. Today is April 22nd, 2022. And today I'm filming the Bee in My Bonnet version of the Riley Blake Designs Spring Quilt Market. Now this is virtual market. We're still doing a virtual market because uh, we're not able to have, you know, Spring Quilt Market. I'm pretty sad about that because it was gonna be here in Salt Lake this year, but I'm sure that they'll be scheduling that again for Salt Lake sometime, I hope anyway. And so in the meantime, I'll just be doing it, um, bringing things to you virtually, just like I have for the last couple of years. So what I'm gonna start off doing is kind of recapping and showing you continuations of what I showed you in fall market, like I was introducing cookbook last fall and that kind of thing, and just tell you where I am at that point. So um, as far as the calendar year goes, and so what we have going on right now is we're just wrapping up cookbook and we are wrapping up the chicken salad sew along. And if you've been following me or doing the sew along, we've been having a fun time doing the chickens. So we've been doing 12 chickens and this is what the quilt looks like right here. I've also been doing piece blocks these are, these are all applique. I've also been doing piece blocks from my Farm Girl Vintage books. And you saw a picture of those in the slideshow at the beginning of this video, but I can't show you the kitchen quilt blocks like I'm going to show you my progress on the chicken blocks because that's at the quilters. So as you know, I have to work, you know, a couple weeks ahead of time of you because I, I have to get it to the quilters and things like that before before it's time to do the big finish blog post so that I can show you pictures. So I've got all the borders cut and sewn together, ready to go. These are borders for blocks for the chickens. And I did actually start, was able to start doing a few of those because all of the applique is done on all of my chicken blocks. All right, so so there's Hattie, and she was the first block that we did. And as you can see that her applique is complete. She's been trimmed up and she's got the, the little squares, her little borders on her. And I, I love how they look. I love how they look without the borders, but I think it's really fun to add the borders too because it just adds that dimension of those fabrics. And now here we go with Hank. Tell me if you can't, can't see him. He's got the block borders on as well. And you know, the buttons for their eyes. And then this is Pearl. And so I have started with that. That's how many I've got finished for, you know, that I've squared up. All of these are applique, but I'll just go ahead and show you all of the chickens because I got them all done. Let me move that out of the way so you don't. All right, so this is Myrtle. She's ready to be pressed from the back and then trimmed up and then her borders put on. I'm just gonna hand you those, sis, and, and put the next one down. Okay, so this one is Hank. Oh wait, did I already say Hank for the other one? This is Hank. I remembered saying Hank, this one right here. I said his name wrong. How did I do that? This is, I better look on my paper so I can tell you right. This is Percy, that's right, how could I forget? That's Percy, not Hank. I forgot my chicken names. All right, so there's that one. There you go, sis. And right here, I'm gonna check my paper now from now on just so I don't just, I thought I had them memorized, but apparently I don't. This is Florence and her baby chick. This is Cornelius. And his baby chick, <laughs> he's got following him. This is Henrietta. She's on the way to hatching four baby chicks. This is Edna and her baby chick. This, for some reason, Edna, 
to me looks like she's kind of, you know, being bossy. And I think that's kind of cute. This is Beatrice. Got to get these threads off. And a couple more. Here we have Penny and her baby chick. And then lastly, this, these I'm not really showing you in order, these last ones. I just took them off my design board. And this is Prudence and her two baby chicks. So again, I'll be pressing these from the back, adding their block borders, and then sewing that together. And then we still have a couple weeks, you know, that we are doing with the sew along. But like I say, I have to work a couple weeks ahead of time. And uh, again, this is the quilt. Let's see, where did I put the picture of the quilt? Right here. Here's the quilt. And this remains on my blog. And the ones that I did on my YouTube channel remain here on my YouTube channel. So all of the tutorials remain. And so you can jump in at any time. And I do know that the So Simple Shapes, they've had to reorder again, and now they're on back order, but they'll be coming in soon. And so, you know, we always have plenty in time for the sew along, but because, you know, right during the middle or the end of the sew along, it's, it's typical, you know, you can never outguess the public. You just don't know how many to order. You keep ordering, and, but things just take time. But the So Simple Shapes are coming back in, the chicken salad ones. This is um, the wide back fabric that I'm using. And this is my vintage trim or rickrack in Alpine that I'll be using in the binding. This is the binding. Let me show you a little bit closer up so you can see kind of on the picture there. There's the binding and the vintage trim that goes in there. So I think tonight I'll be finishing up, trimming up those blocks and putting the border blocks on. And I gotta, I need to get that to the quilter so that I can take photos for the big finish so I can show you what my quilt looks like on the blog. All right, so another thing I wanted to say about chicken salad is the double triangle rulers are in, and that's what it also, that's what we're doing. This quilt, it's not a sew along or anything, it's just a kit, but see it comes in this box of the cookbook fabric, and let me open it. So this is what it looks like on the inside. You have your pattern, which is available only in the kit. It actually does come with the ruler. Thanks, sis. It does come with the ruler included, but you can buy the ruler separately. And then it's got all the fabric except for the back. So let me lift that out. To make that quilt, and let me show you or I'll just open this and show you what the Potluck Stars quilt looks like. Okay. And so in this set of rulers, there's a large double triangle and a small one, and both are used for this. This is what the large makes, and this is what the small makes. I love that quilt. I'm going to make it as a table topper in, for my farm table in my kitchen. But what I wanted to show you is I'll be doing a tutorial on how to make this star. I've had several of you ask me about this vintage star made from vintage fabrics that has that hangs on the wall here in my sewing room. And I've had a lot of you ask me, you know, if I made it or, you know, how to do it, how to make it. And I just wanted to let you know that, yes, you can make it with these uh, double triangle rulers. And um, this is, you piece these like string piecing first. And so I'll be doing a tutorial for that and showing you how to make this star. All right, so I think that's just kind of like a recap of cookbook and what we're doing. And let's see, I showed you the backing. And so I'm just going to do these a segment at a time and then clear everything out. And so I'm going to be back in just a minute, put all of the cookbook away and talk to you a little bit about uh, bee plaids. Okay, so like I say, I'm just going to go in order of how these fabrics 
um, came out or are coming out. And so I did cookbook first because it came out in December. We're almost finished with that sew along. And next we have B plaids, which um, came out last month. And this is uh, one of my basics collections, meaning it will always it will be evergreen. It will will always be in stock at um, you know Rite Aid Blake Warehouse. And when I say always in stock, meaning it's always going to you know produce it and carry it. So you know when different prints are um, gone, you know then they order more and things like that. So it'll still be coming. And sorry, my words are coming slow to me. So just trying to explain it the best that I can. So anyway, this is the B plaids. I wanted to show you kind of, I should have opened these beforehand, but look, I'll just, these are one yard bundles, but of course they come in all of these pre-cuts right here. And so I was just gonna quickly show you each print. Sis, don't take the ribbon off of that one. And I will just, they're kind of a little bit wrinkled, the ones at the top. But I'll just lay them like this so that you can kind of get a close up of what each one looks like. How's that? Now I'm excited about these because I love that Riley Blake allows me to do basics so that, like I said, they're always in stock. I always do my basics in prints from past collections or new collections. I just recolor them if I've used them before. For instance, this and this, I both used in different collections. This was from Prim and this was from Granny Chic talking about the print, but I totally recolored them so that they look different and then did new ones again. And anything that I felt like could be called a plaid, meaning because of the design like this, I added to the collection. I'll set these aside and talk about those at the end. And um, I just love that they can, it mixes with all of my, you know, normal collections, not just my basics. All my basics go with each other, but then they go with my twice yearly collections as well. Okay, that's it from that stack. Okay, and then this is the warmer colored stacks. Maybe I'll show you the other side of that. It's not quite as wrinkly, but look at these reds. Y'all know how much I love red. These are in Schoolhouse Red, Barn Red, Cayenne, and Riley Red. Those are my reds that I like to work with. And then I like to go into the pinks and corals, which are lipstick and coral and frosting. Those are the pinks that I work with. And then we've got autumns and pumpkin and mac and cheese. And then we go into the golds, which are honey and daisy, butterscotch, you know, all of those that match the Riley Blake confetti cottons. Let's see. Now we get into the greens. Another blue, another hearts. And then we've got these two. Oh, I already, I don't know why I said that one aside. I already showed you the other one in that colorway. This is like a busy background or a low volume. But then with this collection, I also have these backgrounds. These two are in this colorway right there. And then these two in jade and pebble. And then these stars, just like the farmhouse star that I did. I actually did this print a long time ago in Autumn Love, but I thought it was perfect because, speaking of farmhouse star, so here's the farmhouse star quilt that we would be starting normally next Monday. So that I told you about when I introduced this collection in fall market. And so we normally would have been starting this this Monday, but we have delayed it until May 30th for a couple of reasons. Number one, we had to delay the chicken salad so long, and so that is still happening. And so I didn't, 
obviously did not want to overlap those two sew alongs because I like to, you know, pay attention to the one I'm doing and not do two at the same time. And I really like to give it my all on the one that I'm concentrating on. So I wanted to delay this and then we went ahead and delayed it until May 30th just to give everyone time to get their patterns because the patterns are on back order for this right now. But, you know, they'll be trickling in and uh, then by then all the quilt shops can give it um, their attention and get those shipped out. And so we'll be starting again, May 30th. Now Riley Blake Designs announced that on their newsletter, in their newsletter this week of the delay, but I just wanted to announce it here just so that so that everyone would know. And uh, that's gonna be fun. And I'll be doing that on my YouTube channel and showing you how to make this quilt. Now this quilt, we use the Farmhouse Star So Simple Shapes. Okay, and these have been I did the I designed these quite a while ago when I was doing wool. I made these for my wool, but I also wanted to be able to use them and show you how to use them with fabric. And so that's why I drew up this quilt. And then you can see that they're circles. Some of them are applique on circles, sort of like my granny's garden. So we're using this circle set right here. Okay, I have two circle ruler sets. This is the set right here that I'm using, and it's a 12 inch, a 10 inch, and an eight inch circle. And there's the SKU number, just so that you know, in case you wanted to know if, which ruler set you had. So we use those, those rulers, those so simple shapes, and of course, um, I saw an interfacing for the stars are all applique on, very easy applique, machine applique, you know, zigzag stitch, straight stitch, whichever you wanna do. So, and then the next sew along for this that we have is for um, plaid pines right here. And, you know, as far as I know, I'm sure I can't imagine that won't go on schedule. That doesn't start until November. And there's a pattern that goes with that too. This is not applique, this one. There is no applique in this one. This is all pieced. This is pieced with my tall triangle ruler right here. And so this is all machine pieced. And so we'll be doing that so along. I'll look at the invitation date just so I tell you correctly. It'll be starting Monday, November 7th. And again, we just need the tall triangle ruler and the plaid pines kit for that. So that's what I have going with, um, with my bead plaids that's happening now. And then I wanted to talk next about my chunky thread yarn because we are gearing up for the first part of June. All summer long we'll be doing the we'll be doing granny squares and we'll be playing with my chunky thread yarn and I'm so excited because um, we'll be doing the granny square along. So let me clear this out, bring that stuff in, and I'll talk to you about that next. Okay, I'm back and I brought in a lot of my chunky thread yarn goodies to show you. And so this is the latest storyboard for my chunky thread. Again, it's 100% cotton yarn. I did I um, I did the first six colors, the first six skeins with my Let's Bake quilt to do for embroidery on gingham, like on larger gingham. And I loved that so much that, you know, we just did way more colors and developed it into yarn. I love um, crocheting with 100% cotton. So let's just, I just wanted to show you what has been, you know, what I have prototypes of that I was never able to show you before, you know, what's coming in, that kind of thing. I do have the charms are in the warehouse. So that's what that one looks like. Hope if I go like that, it's, you don't see shine. Here's the cute little charm with the red skein. And here I've got on this bag, the aqua charm right there and let's see what else so I think I've showed you this before because I've had it for quite a while but this is the prototype for the tumbler I'm excited about that that'll be here soon I don't I don't know if I looked in the warehouse to see if this is here yet but if it's not it'll be soon and 
This is also coming soon. This is the knitting mushroom. Okay, here's the here's what the packaging looks like. And when you open, might as well open it for you now. When you open it, you've got the mushroom and the little hook and the instructions on how to use it. Now, even though it comes with instructions and a diagram, I will, I'll be, you know, when it comes in, I'll do a tutorial on what I use this for. I did, I used these as a little girl, my sisters and I did, and we had a lot of fun with them. And so I thought it would be really fun to bring them back and show you how to use them for yourself. Your, your kids and your grandkids will have fun with that. And then um, I've got the new colors to show you. So here's leaf. And these will be in shortly as, as well. Here's jade. Here's terracotta. I'm just, I'm loving these deep, deep, rich colors. This is raisin. This is songbird. And this is pebble. So these are the six new in addition to the 26 that we have. And so that makes 32 into the collection so far. And these will be coming, of course. I'm talking about my yarn now because in June and all summer long, again, like I said, we'll be doing the, the granny square long. Now I've already shown you how to do granny squares. They're all the same way. This is a two round one, a three, four. So last year, I showed you how to make granny squares and a lot of you have been making lots of granny squares. This, they're all just made the same way. You just keep adding rounds to make them larger. And uh, I've shown you several times my pillows. I just grabbed this because it was handy to show you again. This is one of the things I'll be showing you and talking about during the granny square along. We'll just be doing crochet and all summer long I'll be doing some crochet videos and talking about you know, different projects that we can make with granny squares. Again, last year I've shown you how to make the granny squares. I've also shown you how to join the granny squares together into a pillow. So I've shown you that before. I'm continuing to do granny squares in the morning. See, I've got, so I'm doing rows of 12. I've got seven or eight rows on this now. Okay, here's my blanket I'm doing. And then I'm gonna have this ready for, for the granny square along so that I can show you how I'm doing borders on it, the borders that I'm gonna be putting on it. But I've got uh, seven or eight rows on that. I've got two rows of 12 all ready to go to crochet onto them. And then I've got, these are stacks of 12. So I've got three more rows ready to go and I'm working on my next one. And so I'm just continuing to do that. And I'm loving seeing all your granny squares that you got. Some, some of you are waiting to make granny squares until it starts and that's fine. You can, you know, start and stop whenever you want. But um, a lot of you who've been making a lot of granny squares in preparation so that you have them all ready to go so that you can just do some fun things with them. So that's those. Now, what just came into the warehouse, I wanted to show you still on the bolt because that's how I get it is by the bolt. <laughs> but here, I'm going to show you the picture of this first. This is the panel. So this will show you in small size. There's all my yarn colors. So this is the panel for the Happy Crochet bag. Okay, so this is what the bag's going to look like. Here's the, the front and the back or you can do it however, they're both the same size. So you could have your vintage ladies show on the outside and the crochet granny squares can be in the lining or you could make two of them so that these are on the outside or you could make, you know, you can just do whichever one you want. But here's the panel, it's on decorator weight. It's a panel to make the bag to hold your yarn and your granny squares and th then there's this little bag here that's on here to make I mean, to, excuse me, that says hooked on crochet to hold your hooks and your scissors and stuff like that. This is just, this is not the actual bag, but this is the actual size. See, so it's just a cute little size that you can hold all your little notions in. 
So I will be showing how to do that on the kickoff for the Granny Square Along. And I'll be using, you can choose any color happy zippers that you want. Any of these are going to match. Okay. And yes, I'm happy to announce that these are back in stock, so that's fun. And so now I was just going to show you, I just got this picked up from the warehouse this morning. And I just kind of wanted to show you in real life. So see, there's instructions on it, but I'm still going to show you how to do it. So let's just, I just kind of wanted to show you that's what it looks like. in real life. On that side, it's got a few diagrams on it. We've got some gussets in here. So anyway, I'm excited about that. And so again, I hope you're going to um, join me for that. And like I say, a lot of you have already joined me by doing granny squares and working or slash playing with my chunky thread yarn. And so that's kind of an update on that. That's happening in June. So the next thing that's happening as we're going for this calendar year is in July, Prairie comes. So I am gonna clear all this stuff up and bring in all of my Prairie things and a few sneak peeks of some of the blocks and some of the fabric. And I'll be right back and show that to you. Okay, you guys, I'm back with Prairie stuff and I'm so excited because this is what's coming next. This is the sew along that we'll be starting in August. And um, because it's coming next, I have pre, some pre yardage and I have some one yard bundles that I can show you, the actual fabric. And then I have some of the prototypes of some of the notions in here. So I just gathered everything that I have of Prairie and I'm gonna show you some of the things that I have so far and um, some of the blocks. I actually was able to make three of these blocks from the quilt and a few other things, but first, so here's the fabric in here, right? I showed it to you last market. And so now I can show you the actual fabric. So these are one yard bundles. Now in the one yard bundles, again, it comes as other pre-cuts as well. But what's fun about the one yard bundles is you also get a yard of all of the backgrounds that are kind of a companion print with Prairie, but they don't come in like the 10 inch stackers, five inch stackers and stuff like that, because there's already 42 prints that come in that. So in the one yard bundles, these are included, plus the cheater cloth that I'll show you, this Prairie Life print, you get a yard of that cloth in each bundle. So that's fun. All right, so let's, let me um, unwrap this. I've been waiting to take the cute Riley Blake ribbon off just, just for this so I can show you. All right, so I'm just going to show you each print in the collection. I love, love, love how this turned out. I love this collection. As you know, like I said last time, I uh, designed this collection as a you know, to, as a nod or out of um, remembrance of my ancestors that came across the prairie, which were many of them, to make their home here in the West. And of course, also a nod to Laura Ingalls Wilder and Little House on the Prairie, because you can't even say the word prairie without thinking of that. And so I love I love this collection. I love how it goes with my other collections. I especially love how it goes with my Prim collection and, you know, my flea market. I don't know, my bead plaz. I, I guess I could just keep going on and on, but it especially goes with Prim well. And I did, you know, a few new colors in this one. I'll, sh I'll show you these backgrounds at the end just so that I can show them all together. And then I'll unfold this and show this at the end when we do the other stack as well. So these are like kind of, not all the cool colors, but mostly like the blues and greens. And then here we've got the pinks and corals. 
we'll turn these over that are kind of wrinkled from the ribbon so that you can see. I hope you're able to see these clearly because I just, oh, I love them. I can see every print that I'm going to be using a lot of. And again, these are the same thing, Schoolhouse Reds and Riley Reds. And these really fun fall, fall oranges here and the butter yellows and honeys colors and into cider colors and and then of course we've got some plum and taffies i want to show you these three how they look together and then of course you can't do a prairie line without doing this, this reminds me, this ticking print that I've done. I did this ticking print in Prim, but then I recolored it for this one. Um, reminds me of the log cabin, so I had to do it in that colorway. And so do browns for prairie. And then here here are, and I'll save this till, till last, but here are the eight, you know, like shirting prints that go. Here, I'll just push those out of the way. So that you can see those and how they go together. I think of my ancestors and every time I use prints like this and design prints like this, obviously, okay? So there's all eight of those. And these are all, each of these prints will be in the background of the prairie meadow sew along. I'll show you as I show you the blocks that I made, but all eight of these prints are in there twice in each background. And then I'm just gonna unfold this. This is my prairie life. Oh, and look at the salvage. Little prairie bonnets along there. And then I also put a little saying let me find it so I can show it to you like I usually do on my selvages. This one says, uh, Prairie by Lori Holda Bee in My Bonnet, and of course, produced by Riley Blake Designs. And I put, Remembering the Sweet, Simple Things of Prairie Life. And so I'm just going to unfold this so you can kind of see, you know, there's covered wagons in different color backgrounds, a little patchwork block and home sweet home and all different colors and roses and a lot of the different prairie prints in here. This is gonna be, this is gonna be fun. I'm doing, I'm going to be doing something with this print during the granny square along. So I'll be showing you that. Okay, so there's the fabrics. I've been playing with these for the last week, week or so, and I'm telling you, they've been really fun. So I'm just going to go ahead and show you, let's see, I'll show you notions last. We'll talk about, like, sneak peek of the blocks. All right, I thought I had a bigger picture out here of the quilt. But, I mean, that's big enough. Probably, I shouldn't say probably, I know, inside here. I just don't know how big it is. Oh, I don't have the wide backs yet, but here's the two wide backs that are in the collection. And then that's just showing you what I showed you on paper last time, which is always fun to show you on paper, but it's always fun to show you the real thing too. Okay, so here's the full view of the Prairie Meadow so along. And all of the quilt shops, you know, we put this, the fabric requirements in here so that the quilt shops know ahead of time what is required and needed. These are applique, so of course there is a Prairie Meadow So Simple Shapes set that will be coming in July with the fabric. And we are doing pieced border. This is all pieced, and then you just piece the blocks together. And... Um, so these are 16 inch blocks. And I was able to sew three 
just to give you a sneak peek and show you. They're not appliqued yet, but they're ready for applique. So here's this block. Let's see, can you see the whole thing or should I move it? Okay. So there's that block. And so this is what I'm talking about. These are 16 inch blocks. So we're using this these backgrounds to piece together first before we lay out the quilt. So that block, let's see, I didn't you know do these in order or anything, but you know, this is block number one. So we will be doing that first. And that's there. And I did, I was able to do this one, which is right here in the quilt. And that one's ready for applique. I am just, I've been having such a blast doing these blocks. I cannot wait for this so long. This quilt I'm gonna put on my sampler wall of my cross, when I say sampler wall, if you're a cross stitcher, you know what I'm talking about but just cross stitch samplers. And then I was able to do this third block here, all ready for applique and it's, let's see, where's that in the quilt? Oh, it's down here. So they're just numbered. So this will be one, two, three. So this is block number four, five, six, seven, eight. So I was able to do one, four and eight. And um, I, I can't even tell you how much I love this quilt. I'm so excited for it. And as far as we know, we'll be starting the Sew Along August 29th. And when I say as far as we know, it looks like the fabric's gonna be here on time and everything, but you know, if something happens and it's not, then of course I'll be announcing, Riley Blake will be announcing, but we are shooting for August 29th, which has been the normal, normal date that, you know, we had set to Sew Along. And you know, the Sew Simple Shapes will be coming in and and of course, the, I do not have any of my design boards yet that I can show you, but you've seen the fabric, so you know what those will look like. I don't have my tin mug, but that's what that's gonna look like. I do have my prototype here of this tin. See, this, I kind of like calling it a sewing tin because that's what I'm gonna do. And this is the same block, obviously, that I did there and showed you. So I can show you that. I don't have the calendar yet. And you know what, I do have the charms, but I don't have them here to show you, but these are in quilt shops now, these two charms. I do have um, the binder that we'll be using for the sew along. So this is my Prairie Beekeeper binder. Okay, it looks like that. And on the inside is a gingham. And let's see, I do have my crafting paper pad here, the prototype of it. So my crafting paper pad, uh -oh, let me move that in to center. So on the back, it shows all the papers that are in here. And then there's always two pages of clip art. And so I'll just kind of show you there's 24 pages of prints. I did some of the backgrounds for here and then here are the two pages. Let me fold this so you can see. These are the two pages of clip art. Right here and right here. And that's going to be really fun. Okay, so that's the prototype of that and Let's see what was next. I'm just going to kind of go through here so I can remember to show you what I do have, what I don't have. I've got the washi tape, which is super cute. Let's see where to put that. Here it is right here. I got things stacked up everywhere, as you can imagine. So here's the washi tape prints that you can see here. This is what they look like. This is the cute little header. And as you know, I made sure I put a covered wagon here because I will trim that off, pull it out, unfold it and use that as a bookmark or for paper crafting or whatever. But I did design that cute little covered wagon just for that. And, oh, this is exciting. I've got my, every once in a while when I introduce new colors, I'll do another set of Arafil 
If you follow me at all, you know that I love Arafil. And so I have my new set of Arafil that's in the warehouse, that's ready to go. And it's just meant to go to add to my other Arafil sets for colors that may, um, that you may not have to match because I have used new colors. So what you do with this is you slide that out. This is kind of like a sleeve, but they make it tight there so that you can't, and then you just open it this way. So here are new colors that match my new colors. So if you get this in addition to like my prim set, you know, I just update every so often only when I feel like there isn't, you know, threads to match like all my newer sets. So, okay, let me slide that back on. So thank you, Arafil. Love that, excited about that. Sis, you wanna set that up there? Okay, I do not have the quilted bag yet, but I can't wait for that. That's gonna be fun. So I've made another, I've, I've uh, Riley Blake has done another quilted bag for me through uh, my Vintage Happy 2, that quilted bag. And so Cherry, and you know, I've done some other ones, but my last one was Vintage Happy 2. So I really wanted to do another one. So it'll be, it look exactly the same. And it will be out of that Prairie Life fabric. And I do have this cute little cosmetics bag. You can use it for cosmetics. I used the backing fabric for this. This is vinyl, so it's really great for cosmetics. So you can, you know, uh, wipe it down or whatever if you need to. And it's just got like a little satin lining. It's got a gusset on the bottom, but I'll probably be using it for my cosmetics and stuff like that, or maybe to keep my washies in, or just to keep things for my sew along in. And uh, just like the tiny little notions, but you know, if you follow my floss tubes, you know that I always use smaller bags to put my threads in to put inside my project bags. So this is gonna get a lot of use from me. And okay, on the back page, I do have this to show you. This is my needle minder, my prairie bonnet. This is what the back looks like. And these big sizes, I design them this big so that they go on my bitty boards. I should have brought a bitty board in to show you, but my bitty boards are my design boards, but they're only um, seven inches square. So I, this magnet is strong enough that you put them on each side of the design board. And then this is strong enough to hold your scissors. And then I usually have a smaller needle minder by it. You can always put your needles and scissors here, but I prefer to use this for my scissors. I just throw it on there and then my needles go on a smaller one that's next to it. And so I'm excited about that. Got that ready to go. Let's pass that over there. And then the last thing I do have, I haven't even got it out of the box. And But here is the puzzle that's coming. This is the ready to go. I don't think it's in the warehouse yet, but um, I, I didn't wanna take the wrapper off to open it and show you because because I'm going to give this to my mom. So sorry, mom. I guess you know what you're getting for Mother's Day. She loves to do puzzles and she loves this quilt. So this is going to be right up her alley. So there's the puzzle. And then the next thing I need to show you is, oh, before we talk about the quilt seeds, I did have a prototype of, so, you know, I always have boxed sets like quilt kits. So here's, here's the picture of the box and what it's gonna look like that is the Wildflowers Runner. It comes with everything that you see in the front. It does not come with backing fabric, but I'm gonna I'm gonna back it with this fabric. I think that'd be really cute. And this has five inch stackers in the box and then everything you need to make that. And of course you can just, and the patterns inside of it, and you could make as many as you want. This could just be a runner, but you could just make three of them on top of each other and it would be uh you know like a 57 by 66 quilt if you wanted to do that and so that's a pattern that i done i have done a lot and i thought it would be fun to do in prairie and but i did get a prototype of the box that my shoe fly star comes in so here's the shoe fly stars and again, the box kit with it will come with everything for the top. And 
but not for the backing. And I'm going to use that backing fabric. But this box is so cute. And I happened to get this one. I didn't get the small one, small prototype yet. But I wanted to, even though it's empty, at least pull it in and show it to you. I love these boxes as I have many of them as collectibles. So here's, here's what the top looks like. Here's the sides. Here's the back. So it always shows you. And then it has a magnetic closure. <clears throat> and these are perfect to um, fit your 10 inch squares in for storage later because that's what the kit is. That's what you make this out of is 10 inch squares. And so when you open it, it will come with, like I say, the, the blocks. Now the blocks actually finish at 10 inches too. So I always have a printout, an actual scale of all my blocks. So here's, you can see that again on the lid, that that's what I put on the lid. But there's, there's 20 blocks. And so, I don't know, maybe I'll just hurry and if you can see the whole thing cast, tell me if I need to move this. I'll just hurry and go through them. These finish at 10 inches. And so these are actual size blocks and actual scale. And I can't wait to sew this up. Maybe I should have... I should have cut these papers off and just stacked them in the in the box kit and showed you that would have been fun. Oh, look at that color combination. I love just doing all different uh, combinations. I loved how these plums looked with the teals. I, I just, and of course, classic blue and yellow. I've always loved pink and red together. And this kind of quilt always gives you the opportunity to mix different colors within each block and then put them all together for that sweet, sweet prairie. And I loved how my denim looks with the plum. I just thought that was so pretty. And so that's gonna be really fun. And that will be another fun quilt to have to go with my samplers and things like that. With my cross stitch. Okay, so there's that. The last thing I wanna talk to you about with prairie is these seed packets right here and I know I talked talked about before but I did get the photo uh, photos the um, promo types of these so these are six separate patterns and each quilt shop can do what they want with it they can either sell them as a set of six or they can sell them singly whatever you know they want to do I just um, really appreciate the quilt shops carrying my things and I really like to give them ideas and things that they could possibly uh, put together as a block of the month. And um, so that's why I have come up with these quilt seeds starting with Prairie. And so I have prototypes here of what the patterns look like. Okay, so I'm showing you these envelopes. So that you can see that I had, you know, I really wanted to, I asked Bridie Blake if we could do envelopes like this. And of course they, they came through. I mean, I know I always say it, but I love, I love, love, love working with Riley Blake and all of their staff and just everyone. So I wanted envelopes like this, you know, those vintage envelopes that you close and then you, you know, do the circle like this, like this, like the, not the circle, like the eight the figure eight that you do, so that the pattern will come inside, obviously, when they purchase it, and they can sell the pattern just like this. And I also put a little price tag there and left it blank so they could fill in the price tag if they wanted to, to write it on there so they didn't have to put a sticker anywhere else. And they can sell them just as a pattern, or if they're going to do a block of the month, they can cut up the fabric and cut it into kits here. So there's enough room in here so that when they get the pattern, they can open it, Put the fabric in and then reclose it. So that's what those look like. That's how big they'll be. And then I tried, I really tried to get all six blocks sewn 
so that I could show you with the pre-yardage, but I was only able to get four done. I was sewing even this morning. So I'm gonna just show you. These are each flower top finishes at 10 inches and each of the set of leaves that are all six different finish at 10 inches. And so it makes it a 10 by 20 inch block. And you know, then you can mix and match different flower tops with different leaves for a different look. So here's what I have so far. These are kind of long, so I don't know if you're gonna be able to see the whole thing. So I'm gonna pull it up a little bit more. Cass can see better than I can. Okay, so there's one. And here's another one. So you pull that into where you need to, sis. That one's good. I'm not gonna be able to fit them all in here at the same time, so there's another one. And here's the fourth one. I really wanted to keep going with these because they were so fun to sew. And then of course I, I made sure I did the one in the plum colors. For those of you who've been asking for purples and plums, so we did that. But so that's what I'm saying. You can, so what I'll be doing, these will be blocks, block of the months for quilt shops, um, whoever is participating. And you can either just buy the patterns monthly. I don't know, however each quilt shop wants to set it up, that's up to them. And so find out through your quilt shops. Um, do a Google search to see who's doing, you know, these are, so these are Prairie Flowers quilt seats. Okay, so that's what they're called if you're doing a Google search. And then I'm going to be doing a YouTube, um, you know, here on my channel, a tutorial on putting these together in a quilt and some things like that. And so that will be a, a free PDF that the quilt shops will also have available to them for yardage so that they could cut kits for that for when it comes time. And so that's what I'm doing with that. So the quilt seeds were meant to be just so that you can do all six of them. You can do one singly, whatever you want to do. You know, two of them together would be cute pillows. There's so many things that you could do. You could take a single one and do smaller quilt blocks around. There's just all different things you could do for wall hangings and things. And I wanted the quilt shops to be able to have the freedom to do that and decide what they wanted to do. And um, because every quilt shop is unique, you know, and they have their own fun ideas and that's how it should be. And that's what I love about that. So I'm just gonna stack these again. And so I thought that was kind of fun to show you those, show you those uh, sample blocks and that sneak peek. And again, the same thing goes for the Prairie Meadow Sew Along. If you do, have not pre-ordered your kit yet, then just do a quick Google search on Prairie Meadow Sew Along. And I know that you'll find quilt shops that are selling kits and things like that. If you know your local quilt shop doesn't have them, you can find them online and that's, that will be readily available to you and ask your quilt shops. For those of you who are in other countries, I, my, I have uh, Riley Blake Designs distributes to a lot of other countries. And so it's there. It's just kind of a matter of having to ask your quilt shops, ask, uh, you know, look for distributors and things like that. Okay, so that's what I have to show you for Prairie. And up next, I'm going to show you my uh, bee ginghams. So I'll be right back. Okay, that was a lot of prairie stuff, but I got it all cleared out and I get to talk about bee gingham. So this is my next um, basics collection. So anytime you see a collection with the word bee in front of it, that means it's a basic. Meaning again, it's the same as my bee plaids. It's evergreen in the Riley Blake warehouse. And so all my basics go together and go with all of my other main collections too. Now this one comes in September of this year. And um, look at all these ginghams. These are wide backs. And this is actual scale. I mean, there's not a big, big piece of them because obviously you can see what it's gonna look like. But I've got all of these ginghams and all different sizes and colors. Some of them 
are straight like this and then some of them are on the bias meaning you know printed on the bias um, and that's gonna be really fun because you know I love ginghams I always I'm throwing ginghams into my collections here and there and of course my very first collection I put ginghams in so cherry my very first collection 10 years ago over 10 years ago that I've been designing for Riley Blake and I've loved every minute of it and I'm so very grateful and humbled that I'm able to do what I love and to work with such an awesome company. Now I'm also having a dish towel panel or you could use these for project bags too if you wanted to but this is a dish towel panel that's coming with the collection and it's on decorator weight fabric and I've just took some of the designs for my Be Happy quilt because I thought they would be amazing dish towels. And so that's a panel that's coming with it. We we'll also have a pattern coming called Gingham Garden, which you saw here on the front. Now this one is applique and piecing, both. And it's using several of my ruler sets. That's what I like to do with my basics is find, you know, rulers that I've already have out maybe, or, you know, mix them with my newer ones and my older ones. And so these thimble rulers I've, I've had out for years and I'm using both of these for the flower pots. Okay. And so this is piecing right here. You actually will piece these. This is not applique. And so this is these rows right here for the flower pot rows will be pieced. And then for this part above these blocks will be applique and we'll be using my seed rulers that I did for flea market flowers for these leaves. So we're using the large one and the small one. And I wanted to be able to utilize all of the sizes of rulers because, you know, of those sets right there, because for those of you who follow my sew alongs, you already have these rulers and it's kind of fun to already have them and then, you know, continue on from there. And then we're using a couple of these rulers. We're using all three rulers in this set, except for the large one. They're, this one set comes in four, but we're only using three. So these are the three sizes right here. Okay, so this is this set for Gingham Garden right there. And it's the other ruler set that I have with smaller rulers, not the one for B plaids. This is for B gingham's. And so that's for that quilt. And of course we have requirements for the kit. So quilt shops can have their, you know, teach this and have their classes for this. So they've got their pattern and everything that they need. And then here is another quilt and this is pieced and applique as well. This is my Hexi Half um, rulers for 10 inch squares and five inch squares that I've had for years, the same time that I had my thimble rulers. And I've also have had this honeycomb pattern, but um, before, but I recolored it. So it's the exact same pattern that I've had before, but I thought it was really fun to, I used my denim B cross stitch for this, for the centers, and then all of the honeycomb are the ginghams. And so how you do this, if you've never used my hexi half rulers before, that's all pieced. So you piece the hexi halves together like this, and then you use my sewing interfacing for the smaller rulers. You trace that on there and you applique those on top just by machine, just in the center of those. And that's really fun. So there's a pattern for that that quilt shops can do. And then the last thing that I had is I wanted to use one of my favorite star blocks that I've had for a long time. Um, and I've always called it the gingham star. And so I thought it would be really fun to color it in four different ways, meaning the exact same requirements, but just different prints. And these are mixed up with my ginghams and my other basics. So this one could be for every day, but it could be for Christmas as well. And so there's a gingham star pattern. And so you can make all of these quilts. Can you see all four of these together? It's this. 
You can make all four of these quilts from this pattern. This is just different fabrics for a different look, okay? And so I've also specified here in the storyboards, um, you know, which print and which yardage that you need. So again, that's Christmas, or I, I would use this every day, but I definitely would use it for Christmas too. And then here's a spring one that would be really fun with pinks. And I'm gonna pull that up a little bit closer. So that would be fun for spring. And then the next one would be awesome for summer. It's patriotic, okay? And then this last one right here, of course, would be great for Halloween and for fall. Okay, and that quilt is a square quilt at 72 by 72. So you can use it for a lap quilt. You can use it for your table. Because it's square, you can use it for a round table, a square table, or a rectangle table. When I have square quilts and I have, you know, like a rectangle table, then I will just put my quilt on point like that across my table, and that looks really fun. And a lot of times I'll even layer table runners and, you know, I don't know. I really enjoy putting quilts and runners and things on my tables. And so also I've got, I've got a prototype of this little charm. Did a few little notions with this. Look how cute that is. I'm excited about that. Of course, I'll be putting that on project bags and big bags. And then I've got um, this big needle scissor minder, you know, needle minder, scissor minder in this quilt block coming. It's actually measures two and three quarters by two and three quarters. So it's, it's a little bit bigger than that. And then I've got this wrist pin cushion coming that I'm excited about this uh, wrist tomato pin cushion, but I don't have a prototype of that. I think I th there is a prototype, I just don't have it here that's been accepted. And then I do have this, another little bag, you know, you know me and my bags, I've got to have them. Um, this Bloom Where You're Planted bag that I designed for um, this collection. And this is what it looks like, and it's a canvas bag. So here's the cute little tag canvas. I've done canvas bags before, but I love that. Love how that looks. And, you know, I could put the little charm on there if I wanted. And some of Cassidy's keychains, tassels on there. And uh, pretty excited about that. So I'm excited about bee ginghams. And again, that comes in September. And there's, you know, three or four patterns to go with that. And ginghams, you know, mix well with everything. Oh, I did want to tell you one thing. So after I did all of these, when I did the plaids and I did the ginghams, you know, each fabric has to be named individually. And I'm like, with the plaids, I was like, I can't just say green plaid, blue plaid, you know, <laughs> purple plaid, because there's all plaids. So what I did with the plaids is I named them all fall names. Okay, so that was easy. But when it came to ginghams, I was like, now what am I going to name these? So I thought and thought and I thought, you know what? I'm going to name these after my sisters and all my, my first cousins that are girls. So that's what all these names are. So I've got Debbie and Carolyn and Tammy and Jennifer and Rebecca. Those are my sister's names. And then I've got my cousins, uh, Camille and Melanie and Tina and Renee, my cousin, who's actually a quilter too. So I didn't even tell her. I need to... I need to call her and tell her that she's got a gingham, a bee gingham. <laughs> so anyway, that was kind of fun, naming those. All right, so next up, after I clear these out, I'm gonna, I know I gave you a little sneak peek on a video I did last month or so about my next collection um, coming up in December that's called Calico. And so I, of course, don't have prototypes or anything or fabric because that's just coming in December. But I do have the storyboard that I want to show you everything and all the fabrics on print. So I'll be clearing this out and I'll be right back. All right. Hello again. Okay. I'm going to try to just go through this and tell you every little thing about it. I'm so excited about Calico. I, for the... I keep saying, you know, I sneak peeked it, but that doesn't mean all of you watch all of my videos. But I did talk about this a little bit um, last month, Calico, and how much I love gardening. 
my dad taught me to garden and of course growing up on a farm and he taught me everything I know about growing things and it's just very special memories that I have with him. It's something that we can still talk about whenever I go over. Before I even go in the house, I go and look and see what's growing and how's it doing because I know that he's going to talk about it with me and a lot of times, you know, we'll plant the same things and talk about stuff like that and so it's really fun. So this is a nod to gardening and a nod of, um, you know, spending time with dads or moms or grandmas and grandpas, whoever teach you to garden. And so this is the fabric I'll show first. This is what I um, came up with for the garden quilt. This cap, the name Calico comes from Calico Days. I was gonna do Calico Days too. This is the storyboard. <laughs> clear back to, I don't even know, I'm sure it has a year on here, but it was a long time ago that I did Calico Days fabric. And let me see. I know there's gotta be a date on here, but I just, yeah, there is 2016. Okay, so we're talking six years ago that I did Calico and this was the Calico collection and the colors. And we did, this was the quilt that we did, the bloom. This was my very first So Simple Shapes quilt that I did and sew along. And, uh, you know, of course, we're still using these So Simple Shapes for other things. And I'll talk about, especially for my remix series, and I'll talk about that at the end of this video a little bit. And, but I just thought that was kind of fun. I ended up just calling it Calico instead of Calico Days 2. I did use a lot of these original prints, but I recolored most of them and then because I do much larger collections than I did you know back then then I did add quite a bit more and so it's not exactly Calico Days 2 so I just decided to shorten it to Calico so um let me show you what I've got in here here's the fabric and so I've got 42 prints here I've got four backgrounds that we're using in the quilt and then I've got I've got um, three white backs in the same print in these three colors this is in coral this is in alpine and this is in milk can so milk cans a new a new color that I'm you know introducing in here here is my um, grandma's calico flower garden and I'll show you all a close-up of the prints. Um, in fact, I'll do that now, and then we'll go on to notions and things like that. But um, let me just pull this in. So here's here's my calico. So here's, again, the print. This is the repeat, but this is the actual size. And when I say repeat, that's what the whole fabric looks like before it starts repeating again on the bolt, you know, to continue on. So that's a close up so you can see visually what all the prints and colors look like, but this is the actual size of the print and what it's gonna look like. So I'm pretty excited about that because, you know, who doesn't love hexes as a quilter? Most of us do. And I love English paper piecing and I've done it a lot. And I've always loved this classic quilt and so it would be really fun I thought to include it in a collection about gardens and flowers. And so I'm just going to go ahead. I, I brought these in. I was holding these on my, this is for my cookbook collection. This is my tray for my cookbook. But here, here are the prints. So here are the actual scale and size of the prints. So this is the background, one of them. This is another one. And I only have these in one colorway because that's all we needed. Now the baby chicks I did in the original calico. I also did it in Farm Girl Vintage and this was the original print that I did from the original calico days but this is scaled down. The wide backs that I showed you that are coming in this print are um, scaled the same as the original calico days was. So those are those four. I'm gonna put those back on the print. I've got these two little, you know, not really gingham-y, but they're kind of 
kind of looking gingham, but they're light. I needed to use them for the sashing. I actually called this print fence because it kind of looks like the fence rails going across. Okay, so I've got those, and then I'm just gonna go ahead and show you each print and the colors. So these two are the baby chicks. Then of course I've got these polka dots that are originally from Calico Days as well. These are new. This was also one of the backgrounds. Let me grab that. So you can see that I did it in Schoolhouse Red, Songbird, and then in the background. And then I've got three of these. And yes, I've got plums, a few plums in this collection as well that go well with the, all the other plums that I've been doing here and there. But you know, I just couldn't do a garden um, quilt without having plums, plum colors added, even though it's not something that I commonly do. It's, it's not that I don't like purple, it's just that I only like certain shades of it and I just don't like a lot of it. And so I just like it mixed in here and there. And, uh, but you know what, I'm kind of changing my mind. The more I've been working with it again, it's been a while since I've worked with the plum colors. I'm really, really falling in love with it again. And then these two were original to Calico Days, that print too as well, it's just scaled down a bit. These two were also original to Calico Days. These are little baskets. I don't know if you can see that, but they're a little like, like garden baskets, spring baskets. And I'm loving this, this deep color. This, this deep color I'm introducing in this collection that's a deeper plum that the baskets are. There's another print in that is called uh, Velvet. I came up with that and I thought it looked like velvet. So then I've got three of this print in these three colors. And then two of these. This is the milk can that I was telling you about. And of course, this is something in the, in the quilt. I use this as in my beads and things like that. So I need some deeper reds. I need some deeper colors like this. This is actually a print that's one of my B backgrounds, the diamonds, and I just thought it would be great as a solid, you know, color background with the light colored diamonds on it. And then I've got these, four of these. This is the velvet that I was telling you about, the deeper purple color. So I've got these four prints. And then I've got four of this cute little print. Let's see, what do I call this print? Sometimes, you know, naming, coming up with these names. This one is just called Calico uh, Flower Bed because that's what it looks like to me, kind of like a little top view of the flower beds. Then I've got two plaids here. And these were original to Calico Days as well. These were original to Calico Days as well, these cherry prints, just scaled them down. And I've got four of these. I have to keep looking at what I've named these so I can tell you. This one's just called Daisy because it looks like little daisies. And I do use that name quite a bit for my prints. Those are the four colors in that. And then this was an original to Calico Days as well, these little little baskets that I drew up clear back then. They're also in the background print. If I scaled it down a little bit. These are these two prints I used in uh, Autumn Love, but I just felt like they needed to be in a garden, these two. So I did that. And then here's kind of a bigger view of the wide backs. Um, I mean, as big as you can see on an eight and a half by 11 sheet of paper, but that's the color of the wide backs. So that's the prints close up of Calico, kind of as up close and personal as you can get until the pre-yardage gets here, probably about, I don't know, October-ish is when I'll get the pre-yardage for that. And, um, Maybe I'll talk about this quilt before I talk about the notion. So here's the quilt that we're going to be doing. Now this quilt has kind of like half and half piecing and half applique. 
So all of these blocks around the outside that look like little flowers are pieced. So I just brought one in to show you. Okay, they're pieced, but then we applique a circle in the center. So all of these blocks are pieced. And then within, within the borders, I wanted to put some applique flowers as well. Um, this is pieced, this whole potting shed is pieced. We just put uh, some applique on top. This garden sign is pieced. This fence and the grass behind it and the soil is all pieced. And then of course they're all pieced together. So when you separate it up, you know, I've got, you know, just some applique blocks that go around it. I did bring in, even with my notes and everything on them, I brought in some blocks to show you. So I will just, these are actual size and actual fabrics of blocks that go in the quilt. So I'm just gonna flash them real fast because you don't need to really be reading my notes. But what I do, what I put on the notes is what size, you know, to cut for each block and what fabrics are used and the name of the block and things like that. So in preparation for the sew along guide, when, when we prepare the sew along guide for you. So we just need to know close up exactly what size everything is and exactly what print everything is so that, um, you know, we can keep track of it for the sew along. Now these will be buttons on the P's right here. You know how I have those packages of buttons of greens and things like this. Here's another one that has P's in it. And then on these blocks, I'm just, and you can, you can put buttons in the middle of these or you don't have to. Here's some bigger ones, let me set these over here. I'll tell you about the quilt seeds in a minute. So let's just cover up my writing, but you don't need to read. <laughs> not that there's anything wrong with that, but I mean, it's not like it's secret or anything, but I just kind of wanted to, oh, so here's the block that's this part right here. And then you piece the top, I mean, you applique the tops differently. There's the shovel and the rake. I've got a couple of blocks on that paper. This is gonna be so fun. Now this block right here, see I'm just writing little notes of what we need to do, if we need to trace them reversed, you know, that kind of thing. But I did include a little shape for a little crown in case you wanted to make one of your bees a queen bee. These other ones have buttons. And so these are, these are really fun. So these are actual size blocks that I'm, that I'm showing you. And they're gonna be really fun to do all kinds of flowers and vegetables, little seedlings. We've got a snail here. We've got three. Oh, I have two in a row. I don't know why I have those, but two in a row and the last one. And then of course I haven't shown you the bigger ones like the tomatoes and the fruit basket and the girl watering her hollyhocks. Um, you know, I just didn't feel like I really needed to unfold those, but we have a lot of a lot of other blocks and of course we have to have chickens in the front yard front yard of the potting shed and so that's that quilt okay now let's bring this in and that sew along so the fabric comes in december we will start that sew along in january okay january 30th monday it takes so simple shapes and then it's just in the storyboard we always outline all of the the kit the yardage everything so that quilt shops can cut the kit. This is my um, light box we have in here. I've shown you before. This is all just stuff that goes with the quilt that you can use that's not necessarily new. I've got this calico snails. This is going to be the one that I use with um, five inch squares and instead of a box it's going to come in this cute mason jar container. So you'll get like snails in a jar. Get it? <laughs> and then this one will have a 10 inch box. And this is, um, no, I keep saying, um, but this is Calico Birds. This is 68 by 76. This runner, I forgot to tell you, the snail runner is 32 by 57. But again, you can always do two of these on top of each other and join them before you, you know, quilt the quilt. And it's a snail quilt instead of a runner. And 
I like the idea of maybe doing two of them end to end this way. And then you have a snail runner to go across the bottom of your bed. That'd be fun. And so, of course, I don't have any of these to show you, but I'm just outlining everything that's in here. And this is the fun of virtual quilt market, because if you are a quilt shop owner, you have the opportunity to go to Riley Blake's booth and see all of these things and talk to a rep about them. But doing a virtual quilt market, the quilt um, shop owners can watch everyone's, all of us Riley Blake designers, our own videos and hear us talk about them. But you as customers who do not own quilt shops, but are customers and loyal customers and of Riley Blake and of my things, and thank you very much, can see them up close and I can just talk to you about them just like you were sitting next to me here in my sewing room. And so that's what I enjoy doing about Virtual Quilt Market and I hope you enjoy it as well. So I've got these two charms coming out, a snail and cherries. I've got some new vintage trim in small in pebble color because we are using that. See that little smoke in the chimney is gonna be that small pebble vintage trim. And of course, I've got um, washi and I've got snails. I've got days of the week washi, which is gonna be very handy. And this cute little print, the little daisy print. And then of course these little flowers, which I designed to be reminiscent of the you know, flower motifs in cross stitch. That's what I wanted for it to be, you know, very vintage like that. And because I'm a cross stitcher and love to stitch samplers, then that's kind of where my mind went. And so that's what that is. I also did another scissor minder. That's, this is probably, I don't know, it's probably about real, real scale actually. And so this will hold your needles or your scissors or your needle and scissors or thimble or whatever on on the design board. I also have this little, oh, I'm excited about this, this Flower Power Magnetic Pin Holder. So it is just like what you see, it's kind. It's just a virtual, so it kind of looks, you know, kind of weird, but it's gonna be the color frosting. It's going to be out of plastic, and this is magnetic and has a little dish inside of it for the center of the flower. And then, you know, it's just magne magnetic, so you can just hold pins on it. And of course it shows in here my Scrappiness is Happiness book that I do with It's So Emma. They publish these for me. I design, all of my designs in books, um, they publish for me and they've been doing that for a long time. And I love, love, love working with It's So Emma and the staff. And I'm excited about this book, Scrappiness is Happiness, has 32 quilts in it. If you uh, follow me or my channel, you know all about it by now. These are the storyboards that are coming. And these are the little seven inch bitty boards that I use for cross stitch and with this. And so I've got that coming. And then I did quilt seeds because of course I did flower seeds with prairie, but now I did quilt seeds that are vegetables. And so I'll be doing the same thing. I will, these are an opportunity for the quilts to kit them, just sell the patterns alone or do block of the month whatever they want to do. And then on my YouTube channel, I will have a setting, a free setting on how to put these together. And so here are, well, there's just a bigger picture of each one. And then I actually have a picture, a larger picture, but this is the packaging, what it's going to look like. And of course, these are all veggies. These are all pieced. This is not applique. These quilt seeds, just like the flowers, uh, the prairie flowers are pieced. They are not applique. And so all these quilt seeds, I, like, I want each pattern to stand on its own so that you're able to, you know, do different things with it. Or you can just go ahead and put them all together for different things. So I'm hoping, so this is the peppers. This is the tomatoes little cherry tomatoes and tomatoes. I, I should have said that. I'm, obviously that's pumpkin and then corn and peas. So the little packets are named different things. This is peppers and this is your root vegetables. So, um, you know, we've got potato, onion, carrots, and these are beets or, you know, I guess you could call them radishes, but really they're beets for me. And then this is the squash block. So you've got like your gourds and this is zucchini. <laughs> because you can't do something without zucchini when you're doing a garden quilt. So 
Anyway, so that's what I've got to show you that's coming with, oh, how did I fold this? That's coming with Calico. Oh, I forgot to show you one thing. Maybe I didn't show you everything. I forgot to show you that I have a panel coming out at the same time. I did do, well, it's probably about the same size as in here. So remember my um, Zippy Bags panel one that I did the tutorial for, and now it's back in stock, yay, and so are the Happy Zippers one. Well, I did a Zippy Bags panel two that's going to be coming out. So these bags are the exact same size, exact same instructions as my other ones, four large bags and four small bags. But what I did was I did one to match calico. See, here's the large one to match calico. And here's the small one that goes with it. But then I decided to revisit older collections that I thought would be really fun as a set. So here we have Prairie that, you know, isn't an old collection yet, it's just coming. But by the time this comes out, it will be an older collection. This comes out in December. So it comes out at the same time as Calico. So here we've got the Prairie one and this little Prairie one. And these are, all these fabrics on here are different scales than you could actually, you know, get with the fabric. So I tried to do it that way. So it would be just kind of a little bit different for you. Then I've done one with Prim. And this is the small one with Prim. And then I chose Autumn Love. And even though this comes out in December, I'm still doing fall stitching. So this would be fun to, uh, when I say stitching, cross stitching, to um, whip this up and this up to put my fall stitching in. And so I also not only have the new panel, but I have a new set of Happy Zippers too. So they're going to look the exact same, be the exact same style and size, but they're just different colors that go with Prairie. So these are more of the muted colors. We have Cider, Denim, Frosting, Heirloom Cottage, Pewter, Pumpkin, Riley Green, and Schoolhouse Red. So these are different, all different from the first set. So I did show you that, we did talk about that. Okay, I guess for some reason, I don't know why I skipped over that. Okay, so that's Calico. The last thing I wanted to just talk to you about because Virtual Quilt Market, what Ryder Blake wants us to do is just kind of let you know what's going on, you know, in, in our world with Riley Blake as a Riley Blake designer. And um, thank you, Riley Blake, for everything that you do for us as designers. And one of the things that I've been doing um, is using my So Simple Shapes as a remix mini series. So these are on my, these are on my YouTube channel here. And we're making a quilt out of them. We've done six blocks so far. So I just did the, these two last week. And so what I'm doing is revisiting blocks. Um, um, excuse me. I'm revisiting So Simple Shapes that I've designed to make previous quilts in and then, you know, making them into different designs that you may not have thought of, but I want to show you how the So Simple Shapes <clears throat> are just not a one hit wonder that you can just, <coughs> excuse me, you can just keep using them for different things, just laying them out and, you know, letting your imagination, um, just go wild and having fun with them and using them for all different kinds of applique projects. And so that's what is going on in my world this whole entire year, that's what's going on. And up until January of next year, I've told you what's happening with all of my quilting and all of that. And uh, I hope you've enjoyed today's virtual quilt market. And I hope you're excited to uh, so along with me, continue to sew along with me. Thank you so very much again. Thank you, Riley Blake. Thank you, quilt shops. Thank you, customers. Thank you, followers. Thank you, every everyone who tunes in and subscribes to my channel. It really helps me out a lot. Helps me to bring content to you, and uh, it's so much appreciated. And I'm just gonna keep filming, and um, Cassidy's just gonna keep coming over and showing you uh, my sewing as I'm going along and just uh, letting me tell you about it. And so 
It makes me feel like you're right here in my sewing room with me. And I hope you all are enjoying spring and that it's coming. It's finally starting to get warm here in Utah. So I'm going to be going on vacation here in a little while. So I will chat with you in a couple of weeks. Bye.